Hello everyone, it's your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video, and in this video I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. This is episode 21 of Jet Starlight and Xena Fairy Monster Hunters. If you have not watched episodes 1 through 20, I highly recommend that you do so by clicking on the series playlist in the description box below or on the end card. If you would like to read the story in full on the AI Dungeon website, I'll have a link to that in the description box as well. And if you would like to talk about the show together or with your boy, feel free to post your thoughts on the series so far in the comment section below or DM me on our Discord. I have a link to the Discord in the description box below. So without further ado, let's start episode 21 by reading the last action from the previous episode. You and Zayna go to your room at the inn and rest for the night. You and Zayna go to your room at the inn and rest for the night. When you wake up, she is lying on top of the covers next to you. You get out of bed and go over to her. She wakes up and stretches as a yawn escapes her lips. So I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to go eat breakfast with your fellow Monster Hunter Guild members at the dining hall of the inn. Also, my chair scooted to the side. I noticed I was messing up some of the typing uh, stuff. I think my hands just weren't in the right position. You and Zayna head to the dining hall at the inn, where your fellow monster hunters are located. When you get there, you see that everyone is incredibly sad. What's going on, you ask? Zealot killed all of us, someone says. Zealot? Zealot killed all of us? Do, 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 do. What does that mean? <laughs> like, it's really weird to run up on, like, you go and everybody's sad. It's like, we're all dead. We're all dead here in the dining room. You're talking to ghosts right now. Um, I can either keep that, and a whole bunch of characters are just, like, dead, but also somehow in the dining hall eating breakfast. Or, retry. But na 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 you and Zayna walk over to the dining hall of the inn, where you find your fellow monster hunters. Some of them are eating breakfast, while others are chatting or training. You see a large man with a beard standing near a fireplace, talking with another member. Okay, I'm going to eat my breakfast and thank Kamid for the delicious meal. Kamid is a chef that works at the inn. He's really nice. All he does is just be friendly and cook food, so I like to make sure to thank him whenever I eat my breakfast, though I do forget on occasion. You eat your breakfast and enjoy the day as it passes by. It's a wonderful day at the inn of the last safe haven. Retry. I'm not trying to end my whole day. Okay. So, Zena, what do you think of the meal? It was extremely delicious. The best food I've ever eaten. Yo, Zena really vibed uh, with the breakfast this morning, apparently. Okay, so now we've eaten breakfast. Um, I'm going to call Big Kamid on, well, just call Big Kamid and ask him to write a report on King Minos detailing his powers, weaknesses, and common locations. So in case you guys missed the previous episode, uh, King Minos is a guy who hired Count Grey to assassinate me because I'm a rogue wizard. So now I'm going to hunt King Minos. You call for Big Kamid and ask him to write a report on King Minos. When he arrives, he greets you and Zena with a smile. I have received your message, Master Jacob. What can I do for the Hunter's Guild? So um, I mentioned this in a previous episode. Inside the world info, it stated that I look like Jacob, Zayna's dead ex-boyfriend, uh, but I'm not actually Jacob. I'm going to let it slide that he called me Master Jacob. I'm just going to make sure to just correct him and say, um, people call me Jacob a lot. I do look like Jacob. But you know I'm not Jacob. I'm Jet Starlight. Um, I called you here to write a report 
on King Minos so that we may learn his powers, weaknesses, and common locations. Very well. I shall write a report on King Minos immediately. It should be ready for you tomorrow when you wake up. Thank you, Big Cayman. Big Cayman nods. Okay, okay. So we're gonna have to wait like a whole day in order to get the report on King Minos, which is interesting. That seems like it's like postponing the King Minos adventure to where it's like we're probably gonna hunt something else this episode. So that's fascinating. There are other things that I can do. Um, so you are talking. I guess I should say, for the story summary update, you are with Big Kamid and Zena in the dining hall of the inn. You want to discover what the most powerful magic item in the world is. So last episode, I was really interested in figuring out what the most powerful magic ring is, but there are just more types of magic items than magic rings. Um, so I might as well just try and get the most powerful magical item in the world. Um, it'll likely help us in our battle against King Minos whenever that happens. I was thinking that was going to be today. Might not be today, you know, if I end up just hunting somebody else because Big Kamet has to spend an entire day writing a report on King Minos. Maybe King Minos will try to assassinate us again in the meantime. Who knows? Maybe I can just um, ask Big Kamid if he can write the report faster. Uh, let him know that it's like an urgent thing. Uh, King Minos uh, essentially tried to assassinate me yesterday. Uh, I don't really have time to wait an entire day a report on King Minos. Could you complete a report on King Minos in the next like 15 minutes? Now, before I was just going to respect the timetable that he gave and be like, well, maybe we'll just hunt him another time. I don't know why we would do that. I'll do my best, Master Jacob. Okay. People are just going to keep doing that. Uh, Big Kamet walks over to a desk and sits down. He pulls out some parchment, an inkwell, and a quill cool feather. He quickly starts writing on the parchment. Zaina turns to you. Today, I have two goals. I want to hunt down and slay King Minos. And I want to claim the most powerful magical item in the world. What are your plans for today, Zena? I'm going to hunt down and slay a Yeti King. Ooh. That's kind of interesting. So I'm going to say to Zena, I wish you the best of luck on your hunt. Do you have any special armor or weapons to help you deal with the Yeti King? No, uh, I wish to hunt the Yeti King with only the assistance of my own natural abilities. I'm sure you'll do fine then. Good luck. Zena nods and runs off. Big Kamet finishes writing and approaches you. I like that we know what Zena's like side mission is. Okay. Thank you, Big Kamet. For finishing the report so quickly. 
I truly appreciate it. It was my honor to help you, Master. You nod. Goodbye, Big Kamet. Let's meet again tomorrow. Big Kamet nods and leaves. You suddenly feel tired. You walk up the stairs in the inn and lay down on your bed. When the game's like, you gotta go to sleep. I'm not gonna go to sleep, though. So, um, even though I'm laying down on the bed, I'm just going to read the section of the report titled Powers. Water magic, hydromancy, the ability to influence and manipulate water. Master level 5,000. You have a powerful command over water. You can influence its shape and color and amount to your whim. Hold on. Um, let me be more specific with my action. You read the section of the report on King Minus. Because I have hydrokinesis, and I don't know if it was trying to say he too has hydrokinesis, or if it got confused because I wasn't specific about like what the report was. King Minos is a vampire. He can turn himself into a bat, a cloud of poisonous gas, or a shadow. He has extreme control over shadows. He can manipulate them and even meld into them. He can also control small mammals like rats, bats, and owls. We've fought beings like that before. Uh, so King Minos doesn't seem like he'll be a particularly difficult challenge. So now I'm going to essentially do the same thing, but instead of reading the section titled Powers, I'm going to read the section titled Weaknesses. Since he's a vampire, I imagine he's going to be weak to, like, normal vampire stuff. Or maybe he'll have special weaknesses. Let's see. King Minos fears religious icons. He also has a weakness for the color crimson. He has extreme pain when in contact with running water, religious icons, and anything made of silver. A wizard can easily kill a vampire by trapping him or her in a magic jar. Oh, well. Maybe I should just get a magic jar. That sounds pretty good. I mean, if a magic jar can beat him, then I'm sure the most powerful magic item in the world could probably also beat him. Should I be just beating people with magic jars? Magic jars, excuse me, just sound like they'd be really good. I'm updating the story summary. You are in your room in the inn. You are reading a report on King Minus. Okay. And now I'm going to read the section of the report titled Common Locations. King Minos resides in a large castle on a hill. He spends most of his time on the third floor in the bedroom with purple walls. He doesn't sleep, so he may be there all night. His castle is filled with traps, which will kill anyone who tries to attack him. Interesting. Okay. So if I can get him out of his castle, that'd be nice. But he really wouldn't have any reason to leave his castle. I guess I'm going to call Tanya and ask her hmm, what magic jars are. I'd like to learn more about magic jars. Tanya tells you that the magic jars are items that can trap ghosts and spirits. Once trapped, the spirit has no choice but to grant three wishes. They are very rare in ancient artifacts. Thanks, Tanya. You go to sleep and dream about Amanda. And dream about Amanda. She is happy and laughing. I'm gonna get rid of that last line. 
I'm going to ask Tanya if she knows how to make magic jars. Because she just said you can turn any spirit into a genie, and that sounds like it would be extremely useful. I could capture King Minos and then use him as a genie. No, but I know where you can get one. Ooh, ooh, Tanya out here being useful? Why wouldn't she already get one? Like, it's really weird if I knew where I could find a magic jar and they're like these super rare artifacts. Well, why wouldn't you just get one? Like, why wouldn't you just already have one time? You're rich, too. It's not like you couldn't afford it if it's like a price tag thing. Also, I forgot. I have to hit enter. I, like, altered that last thing and then I just expected it to work. Do, 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 do. The nearest magic jar dealer is Marco the Magician. He lives in a small house near the edge of the city. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, also, the game's like, thanks, Tanya, you say, hanging up the payphone. I'm not hitting her up with a payphone. Um, and also, I'm not done talking to Tanya yet. So I'm going to ask Tanya if Marco... The Magician, what a name. If Marco the Magician has a collection of magic jars available for sale. Because she mentioned that he may have one and that he's a magic jar like dealer. But if he has like a whole bunch, that'd be really interesting because they're supposed to be like rare artifacts. I doubt it. Marco is a dealer, not a collector. He buys and sells magic jars, but he won't have more than one or two at any given time. If you want to find a collection of magic jars, you'll have to look somewhere else. Hmm. Says Tanya. Okay. Fascinating. Um. Why does Marco the Magician sell magic jars instead of using the magic jars himself? Goodness, I just can't type today. Instead of using the magic jars himself to just have anything he desires Because if I can get three wishes from, like, trapping a spirit in a magic jar, then I should just, like, have a magic jar and then have my wishes granted. Marco is very greedy. Whoa, that. Marco is very greedy. He doesn't want to waste the wish potential. I think he's trying to create a magic jar that when you use it, you're also transported into his house so he can sell you as a slave, too, says Tanya. Oh, that's weird. Uh, so right now, uh, I have to update the story summary. You were in your room in the inn, talking to Tanya about magic jars and Marco the Magician. Waste the wish potential. What do you mean? I waste the wish potential. He's very greedy and he doesn't want to waste the wish potential. Can you only ever get three wishes granted ever? A magic jar can be used to grant three wishes. If you had a jar, you could use those three wishes to gain more magical knowledge, like how to make a new type of magical guardian, says Tanya. How do you know this, asks Zayna, when Zayna just shows up? Uh, I guess I'll be like, hey Zayna, welcome back from your hunt. Did you defeat the Yeti King? Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
Yes, but I almost died. It was horrible, Zayna says as she trembles. I'm sorry you had to go through that, you say. I don't understand why I didn't just stay here to begin with, says Zayna. I'm proud of you, Zayna. You fought hard using only your natural abilities. And you came out on top. Uh, don't worry, I'll get back to the Tanya conversation momentarily. Thank you, says Zayna. It's getting late. You should be heading to bed soon, you say. Nope, that's not true. That is not true. Uh, I'm going to cut off everything after uh, thank you, says Zayna. So now I'm going to jump back to the Tanya conversation. Um, Tanya. If you use a magic jar and get three wishes granted, can you then capture another spirit and get three more wishes? Like, is it a thing where it's like, I can just keep reusing the jar? Because it sounds like the spirit is the thing that's like interchangeable kind of thing. But you can just keep the same jar. Yes, Tanya says, wow, so that, that makes less sense. So why doesn't Marco the Magician just use his like magic jars to just <sighs> grant all of his wishes? You know, if he's a greedy person, you'd think he'd hoard magic jars. Also, I think I spelled, that's like the wrong hoard. It's not even that I spelled hoard wrong, it's just a different meaning of hoard. You'd think he'd hoard magic jars rather than sell them. Ah. Um, I know that he, I know that Tanya mentioned that Marco the Magician is trying to make one where it's like if you use it, uh, you get transported to Marco's house and then he sells you as a slave. But he could just wish for people to be slaves. So Tanya's like, he probably doesn't know how. What? Interesting. Are you saying that Marco the Magician may not know how to use the magic jars to catch more spirits. Or maybe that he just may not know how to use the magic jars at all. Well, no, I guess to catch more spirits. She mentioned the wish potential thing, right? And I don't fully know what she meant. It's like it can be used to grant three wishes, and then you could use them to gain more magical knowledge. So earlier I was asking, like, why doesn't he use it to get his wishes granted? And then she's like, he doesn't want to, like, waste a wish kind of thing. I guess I kind of get it. Marco is trying to figure out what to wish for. So he probably has a magic jar and he's just like, but I don't even know what I'm going to do with like my first three wishes, let alone if he had like three magic jars, and he had like nine wishes. And he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with like these nine wishes. Uh, so that's fair, I guess. He may just have one and he doesn't use it because he's like indecisive. Um, and then when I asked the question um, a moment ago, like, why doesn't he just hoard them? Or why doesn't he have them just grant all of his wishes? He may not know how to like phrase his wishes. So maybe that's what I should ask. Like, are you saying that Mark of the Magician may not know how to like phrase his wishes? So he just hasn't made any wishes?
do 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 No. He knows how to phrase wishes, he's just too greedy. Marvel the Magician sells his jars because he needs money for his addiction, says Tanya. Addiction, you ask? Marco is a gambler, says Tanya. Oh. Oh. That's deeper lore than I thought for Marco the Magician. Uh, let's see. You and Zayn are in your room in the end talking to Tanya about magic jars and Marco the Magician. Um, so Marco the Magician is a gambler who also sells magic jars. Magic jars, which are literal things that can just grant wishes. And the reason why he wants to make a magic jar that transports you to Marco so that he can sell you into slavery is because he can then make more money off of selling you as a slave so that he can continue to fuel his gambling addiction. Why doesn't Marco the Magician wish away his gambling addiction using a magic jar? I imagine the answer would be because he doesn't want to, because he's addicted. <laughs> um, that's fascinating. He tried it didn't work, says Tanya. Why didn't it work, you ask? I don't know. I assume there must be a limit to how many times you can use a magic jar because before it becomes ineffective, says Tanya. Interesting. So it's like you can use it over and over again and keep filling it with like new spirits, but eventually that's not going to work anymore. And you're just going to have to get like a new magic jar or whatever. Um, fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, magic jars are cool. It was like a brand new thing. We essentially have genies now, but better, better genies because you can use any spirit and apparently you can use vampires. That's really cool. Um, what is the range on a magic jar? If I had a magic jar, could I capture a spirit? even if it was miles away from me? Because I'd like to be able to capture King Minos without even having to go in his castle. I believe you could, says Tanya. Mark the Magician once made a wish from miles away and it still worked. That's not even what I asked. What? Made a wish from miles away? So you don't even have to have the magic jar on your person to make a wish? Why can't I? Can I have a wish granted on someone else's magic jar? No, you don't, says Tanya. That's remarkably convenient, you say. Yes, it is, says Tanya. So, hold on. Does that mean... Wait. So, how do you use a magic jar to capture a spirit? I need to, like, now get, like, the instruction set. Like, how do you, like, step by step work your way through it? You can't, says Tanya. What do you mean I can't, you ask? I mean, you can't, at least as far as I know. You need to be a master magician or else spirit forbidden spells to try to capture spirits in jars. You need to be a master magician or probably cast forbidden spell. Like I'm gonna get rid of the or else spirit forbidden spells. So I'm going to say you need to be a master magician or cast forbidden spells to try to capture spirits in jars. Okay? Cool. How can I learn how to capture a spirit in a spirit jar? Like, what do, what do I need to do? 
Because she mentioned you have to be a master magician, uh, but like, who would teach me how to do that? You can't, it's forbidden, says Tanya. Forbidden how, you ask? Forbidden for anyone who isn't a master magician or doesn't have government authorization, says Tanya. Hmm. Could Ludmilla give me the authorization I need? to capture spirits with a magic jar. Also, hold on. Why can't I just use a forbidden spell? Um, could you teach me a forbidden spell that would allow me to use a magic jar to capture spirits? Do 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 do. I could try, says Tanya, but you'll need to learn a lot of other spells first. What do I need to learn? You ask. First, a spell to make yourself smarter, says Tanya. So she's like, you could learn a forbidden spell, but it would take like a whole bunch of time. Okay. So I would ask like, how long would it take for you to teach me a forbidden spell? I can just copy and paste this from earlier. A forbidden spell that would allow me to use a magic jar to capture spirits. Hmm. Because if I have to learn a whole bunch of additional spells, I don't mind that. It would probably take a few weeks, and then we would still need to get the spell itself. Okay. Would it be easier for me to just get authorization from the government to use magic jars? than it would be to learn the forbidden spell. Yes, I'm sure the government wouldn't give you authorization, says Tanya. Why wouldn't they, you ask? You haven't been a government official for very long, have you? Asked Tanya. Um, I recently became the king of the monsters, king of the werewolves, and king of the realm of the dead. Can I give myself authorization? <laughs> you know, to like, to use magic jars to capture spirits? Like, it's weird that it's a government thing. I am just a king and like multiple rights. So like, why can't I? I don't see why not, says Tanya. Yo, what? Awesome. Then I give myself authorization to capture spirits with a magic jar, um, now that I have authorization, how do I capture spirits with a magic jar? <laughs> you need government approval. I'm a king. Oh, shit, you got it. <laughs> Good enough for me. I guess we will begin there, says Tanya. Okay. Command Tanya to teach you how to capture spirits with a magic jar. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. 
Tanya begins to teach you how to capture spirits with a magic jar. It's actually not too difficult, although it takes you a couple days to get the hang of it. By the end of it, you're able to hold the spirit in the magic jar without much trouble. Wait, what? Tanya, as a part of our training, did you get a magic jar for me? Well, I guess as a part of my training, did you get a magic jar for me? If not, then how did I get this magic jar? I imagine she'll just say, yes, or no, you got it yourself or something. Like it time skipped. I did get a magic jar for you. I didn't give it to you, says Tanya. Why not, you ask? I don't know why I didn't just give it to you, but I didn't. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Let's see. Tanya is training you in the art of capturing spirits with a magic jar. Okay. No problem. I should be able to buy my own magic jar. From Marco the Magician. Thank you for training me. I appreciate it. What is the name of the art of capturing spirits in a magic jar? The name of the art is called Psychomancy, says Tanya. Thank you, Tanya, you say. You take the jar and place it in your pack. Are you going to keep that with you, says Tanya? I'm not about to steal her jar. She straight up just said she's not giving it to me. Okay. Excuse me. Um. I'm going to ask her, how do you, how do you ask a magic jar for wishes? Is it a special process or do you just ask it? Like, <laughs> like I don't know if it's going to be like, a, you got to do like a ritual or whatever, or is it just like you wish for something and then the jar grants it kind of thing? You just ask it, says Tanya. How do you know when a spirit has left the magic jar, you ask? The wax inside the jar melts away, says Tanya. Oh, that's kind of like a candle thing. That's kind of neat. Okay, so, hmm. I'm trying to figure out if there are any other like important questions that I need to ask before I go and try and buy like a magic jar. I may not buy a magic jar from Marco the Magician because he kind of sounds like a crackhead, um, I might just ask him where I can find a collector, because if anyone would know, it'd be Marco. Um, so I know how to get the wishes. Oh, here's a good question. Um, can anyone ask a magic jar for a wish, even if they didn't capture the spirit that resides in the jar? Like, I'm trying to figure out, do the spirits have, like, a master? Like, is it, like, a loyalty thing? Or is it, like, nah, like, I could just wish for some right now, and if there's a magic jar in existence, it'll just grant my wish. Yes, says Tanya. Whoa, what? So then I asked, uh, who was the first person to capture a spirit in a magic jar? And Tanya said, I don't know. Uh, and then I said, uh, I should make some wishes then. And then Tanya said, that's probably not a good idea. Um, hmm. Do the wishes granted by a magic jar normally have some, um, like, I'm trying to figure out how you phrase it. 
like a monkey's paw kind of thing where it's like you get what you wanted but not quite the way you wanted to the point where it's actually like hurtful like do the wishes granted by a magic jar normally have some unforeseen malicious side effect Yes, says Tanya. What if I only wish for something that was entirely beneficial for me, you ask? Tanya, Tanya seems to be getting angry. Look, you don't know what you're doing. These things are dangerous, she exclaims. Hmm. They do sound pretty dangerous. What is the worst thing someone has ever wished for using a magic jar? I feel like people would know because it would have like huge effects on the world. A couple of fools got their hands on a magic jar and wished to be the most powerful people in the land. They weren't specific enough in their wording, so their wishes backfired, said Tanya. How did their also backfire is what I was looking for. Uh, how did their wishes backfire on them? I am curious how you twist that. You know, if you wish to be the most powerful people in the land, it's not like they became the only people in the land, right? They ended up with the body of a baby, says Tanya. That's pretty funny, you laugh. Tanya starts laughing along with you. Do you want to hear a magic joke, she says? Um, hold on. So, are you telling me that the two most powerful people in the land have baby bodies? Are those two guys still the most powerful people in the land? I'm trying to know they were deposed by the first goblin rebellion, which happened shortly after these two egomaniacs made their wishes. That's too bad, you say. The most powerful person in the land is Baroness Ludmilla. What? Is Ludmilla really that powerful? Like, hold on. Did they get... Were they the most powerful people in the land politically rather than the most powerful people in the land magically? Because, yeah, if they became political leaders and then they were like, but you got baby bodies, that's lame. But if you're like, I'm a god, oh, no, yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> yes, says, oh, they messed up her name. They called her Tana. Yes, says Tanya. I guess that explains it then. Explains what, asked Tanya. There aren't any goblins at the inn, you say. No, that's that's not what I would. The the train of thought was right, where I'm like, that explains it then. And then she's like, explains what? <laughs> that explains how the most powerful people in the land uh, we're taken out by goblins. Political power really doesn't mean much compared to raw magic power. Hmm. I'm going to have to be really careful messing around with, like, magic jars. Exactly, says Tanya. For a second, I thought you were going to say something else, you say. Tanya looks at you suspiciously. You're not still worried about that joke, are you, says Tanya? No, of course not. What? Hold on. Worried about that? I'm not worried about the joke. 
Oh, right. You mentioned a magic joke that you wanted to tell me. Do you still want to share that magic joke? Whatever that was going to be? I don't know how AI Dungeon's going to do a joke. It's going to be weird. It's because it's like it's going to try and be intentionally funny. You got a lot of nerves, says Tanya. What, you ask? Saying you want to hear a joke even after implying that you think I'm ugly? <laughs> Nigga, what? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> is, that, is that the joke? <laughs> I don't think you're ugly. <laughs> I don't know why, but that got me. I guess because I was expecting something funny. And then it seemed like a... That seems like the kind of humor I would expect from AI Dungeon. Tanya looks at you angrily and then starts to walk away. Wait, I take it back then, you're ugly. <laughs> Have a nice day, you say. Tanya turns around and looks at you once again. <laughs> now that's funny too. I like the concept of saying, wait, I take it back then, you're ugly. <laughs> Like, you upset them trying to say that they're not ugly. And then you're like, oh, shit, wait, hold up. <laughs> My bad, you ugly as fuck, dude. <laughs> I didn't mean to whip in. <laughs> uh, comfort Tanya, I guess. Because I'm like, yeah, you're not ugly. You're cool. You walk up to Tanya and put your hands on her shoulders and look into her eyes. Okay. Yeah. You're not ugly, Tanya. You're awesome. You are a great help to the Monster Hunter Guild. Thank you for training me in psychomancy. I appreciate it. Also, is that how that's spelled? She said it earlier when I asked her uh, what this art is called. Yep, that is how you spell it. It just wasn't capitalized the first time. Do, 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 do. I've been randomly capitalizing things throughout this whole time. Like magic jars, I sometimes capitalize it and I sometimes don't. You really think so, says Tanya? I know so, you say. Thank you, Jacob, says Tanya as she hugs you. Thank you. You hug Tanya back and then let go. My name is Jet Starlight. I just look like Jacob. Cool. So now I kind of know everything that I kind of need to know about magic jars. Do, 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 do. Tanya gives you a confused look. Uh, I was joking. You said, no, I wasn't joking. Uh, this is... I like how the game tried to say, yeah, that was a bad joke saying you don't like Jacob. I don't know why everyone is so confused by the idea that I'm that I'm not Jacob. <laughs> I don't even know. How so many people know who Jacob is <laughs> to confuse me with Jacob in the first place. Uh, I'm going to go visit Marco the Magician. I forgot to say is so confused. I don't know why everyone is so confused by the idea that I'm not Jacob. Who's Marco the Magician? Asked Tanya. Don't do that. Don't do that. Refresh. <laughs> Tanya literally taught you who Marco the Magician is. I don't think that will help. He's a big phony, says Tanya. Based on what you've told me, he is the closest magic jar salesman. I'm going to ask him 
if he knows any magic jar collectors. I would like to purchase a collection, excuse me, of magic jars. Tanya sighs and nods. All right, I have to go patrol the forest, says Tanya. Tanya draws a short sword from her belt and extends it. The blade is shiny and reflects your face. You step back. Ooh. I wish you the best of luck on your patrol, Tanya. Ooh. Happy hunting. Do 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 Thank you, says Tanya. Tanya walks away. See you later, Jacob, she says as she leaves the room. Dang it. Why is it that everybody thinks that I I'm not gonna explain the Jacob thing again. You walk outside and look around at the nearby village. There are a lot of villagers going about their day to day activities. Okay, so now I'm going to visit Marco the Magician. Let's see. You are on your way to visit Marco the Magician. You want to find someone who is willing to sell you a collection of magic jars. You grab a nearby villager and ask where Marco the Magician is. He tells you to go to the large mansion at the top of the hill. You head up the hill and reach the large mansion at the top. You knock on the door and it opens instantly. Are you Marco the Magician? A short old man wearing a tuxedo steps out. I am he, he, sa <laughs> he says in a squeaky voice. I am he. And I'm, no, I'm not going to say I'm Jacob. That's so fucking dumb. <laughs> it makes sense for other people to mistake me for Jacob. I wouldn't call myself Jacob. I am Jet Starlight. Um, I was wondering if you knew someone who would be interested in selling their collection of magic jars. I'm sorry, I really don't know anyone who would be selling magic jars. They are quite rare and difficult to come by, he replies. Hmm. Interesting. I've heard that you sell magic jars. as a way to maintain your gambling habits. I've also heard that you sell slaves, or at least that you want to sell slaves. Is this true? Marco the Magician glares at you angrily. Who told you this, he demands. Uh, and I'm not going to reveal that Tanya said it. Also, Tanya's not a vampire. That doesn't matter. How many magic jars do you have with you? Hmm. 
I don't think you want to see what's in this box, he says in a low and threatening tone. You pick the lock on the cage with your tools. What the hell are you doing, asks Marco, growing increasingly angry. Um, I don't know why he would say, you don't want to see what's in this box. And then I go, yo, hold on, let me pick this lock on this box that you just showed me. <laughs> hmm. You seem upset. I don't mean to offend you. Do you have any magic jars for sale? Hmm. Mark the Magician seems to calm down. Apologies, I'm just a little on edge. This box contains all the magic jars that I have for sale. Do you want to buy them? He opens the box and you look inside. You count how many magic jars are in the box. Zayna mentioned that he normally would have like maybe one or two on him at any given time, maybe two or three. How many are going to be in this box? There are three magic jars in the box. That seems consistent. You are talking to Marco the Magician at his mansion. Marco the Magician says that one jar can turn a person into a frog, one jar can turn a person invisible, and the last jar can bring a person back from the dead. Magic jars can literally do whatever you ask. So all three of those jars can just do all three of those things and more. I know about magic jars. Yeah, like, it's interesting for him to be like, this one does this, and this one does that. Marco the Magician stares at you in disbelief. You do? Well, which one of these three jars can do all three of those things, he says. Literally all three of those jars can do all three of those things. As long as all three of those jars still have three wishes available. Really, he says in disbelief? Hmm. Hmm. Marco the Magician. Were you ever trained in psychomancy? Or do you use forbidden spells in order to use magical jars? He just literally may not know like how magical jars work. He could be doing the forbidden spell route and just have not been like properly trained. Mark of the Magician laughs. I was never trained in psychomancy. Do you think I need to be in order to use magical jars? You don't need to be trained in psychomancy. But it seems obvious that you're not entirely sure of the power that magical jars hold. How much do you sell these for? It's odd, uh, like, that they are in the possession of someone who doesn't really understand, uh, like, how magical jars work. Marco the Magician says he sells the jars for 40,000 gold each. 
You hand him 40,000 gold in exchange for the three magic jars. Marco the Magician puts the money in his briefcase and hands you the magic jars. It was nice doing business with you. 40,000 each. But then it says I just give him 40,000 gold. But it doesn't say each. So I'm going to say each. Says Mark the Magician. Okay, so now I have a question for him. Do you have any slaves inside your mansion? It does kind of bother me, uh, the concept that, like, he wants to sell slaves. Mark the Magician says he has dozens of slaves inside his mansion. Slaves are expensive. They do all the work around here. Well, I do nothing but count my money, says Mark the Magician. Don't you also like to gamble your money? Marco the Magician says he loves to gamble. It's the only thrill I get anymore, the highlight of my week. I'll sell you one of my slaves for a low price of 10,000 gold, says Marco the Magician. Huh. I want to do a bet with you. I bet that I can slay any, like, world-threatening monster you want me to slay. If I win, you give me your mansion and all of your slaves. If you win, I'll create a statue of you made of pure gold. Marco the Magician laughs. That's a bet I could never lose. I accept your generous offer. You hand 10,000 gold to Marco the Magician in exchange for one of his slaves. I didn't buy a slave. I didn't buy his slaves. <laughs> Chill. Okay. Then it is a bet. What monster do you want me to slay? Actually, really like this concept. This is like insanely interesting. Mark the Magician says he wants you to go slay an enormous ancient red dragon that has laid waste to countless kingdoms. The beast is said to be unkillable, so no soldiers have attempted to kill it yet. It's called the End Ender, and I want it dead. Awesome. I guess it is time for me to go slay the end ender. When I get back, okay, I guess I'll just say, see you soon. Excuse me, I haven't fought a straight up dragon yet. This is actually really interesting. See you soon, says Mark the Magician, and you teleport back to reality. Over back to reality. I didn't leave reality. Chill game. Do, 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 do. Okay. I'm going to store your magic jars in your room at the end.
You head back to the inn to store your magic jars. You look worried, honey, says Anna. Going to correct that to Zaina, because that just would make more sense. Uh, I just got a big job offer to slay an unkillable dragon. I'm a little worried about it. That's not what I'm going to say. I'm not worried. I'm about to go kill a supposedly unkillable dragon. Wish me luck. You can do it, says Zayna, giving you a hug. You head out the door to slay the dragon. You take Zayna's advice and stock up on supplies. Then board the carriage that will take you to the mountain where the dragon dwells. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to equip my dragon armor, or maybe I want to equip, do I want to equip dragon armor, or do I want to equip stellar armor? Both are supposed to be really good. Um, not stellar armor, what's it called? Is it called stellar armor? It's spectral armor, yeah. So I'm going to equip spectral armor, and I'm going to equip, um, God killer gloves. I'm gonna need those. Uh, Cause that's how you kill unkillable things. You equip your spectral armor and God killer gloves. It's getting dark outside. You board the carriage and ride to the foot of the mountain where the dragon lives. You get off the carriage, look around and see nothing but rocks and darkness. Okay. You are at the mountain. You're at the mountain of the End Ender Dragon. Your goal is to slay the dragon. Yep, I mean that's that's true. You are fully equipped with some of your best gear. End Ender Dragon. Come down the mountain to face me. I would like to talk with you. You wait for a few minutes and see something flying toward you in the sky. It looks like a small black dragon that lands in front of the mountain. It has only just materialized when it spews a jet of flames at you. You easily block the flames with a magic field. Interesting. I'm going to specify using your own fire magic. Well, I guess using fire magic. Or maybe using your mastery of fire magic. I am a master of fire magic. So using flames against me won't work. I would like to talk with you. If you don't mind. I am the king of monsters, after all. Oh, I forgot to say, using flames against me won't work. It's so easy to, like, miss words. The dragon looks at you, its eyes shining in the moonlight. I don't believe you are the king of monsters, but I'm willing to listen. You look surprised, but hide it with a poker face. I defeated the evil king himself in combat and took his throne 
as the new king of monsters. Is that right? I didn't think there were any other dragons around anymore, says the dragon. There aren't. I'm the last one, you say. I don't believe you. How can a human kill a dragon? I ask skeptically. Um... I didn't think there were any other dragons around anymore, says the dragon. Hmm. You're the first dragon I've ever met. Well, unless you count the dragon men that I can create using fire magic. It's good to meet you. People call you the End Ender. Is that your real name? Hmm. Something like that, I suppose. Not many dragons these days. Most of us were hunted down by the great Lich Lord after he perfected his techniques. This line of questioning is getting a bit too close to home. Is it? I mean, I don't, I don't really think so. Maybe it's getting close to home for him. I don't know. I'm not going to alter it. That sounds fine. Hmm. People claim you're unkillable. Do you have any weaknesses? The dragon seems to smile, but you couldn't tell because it doesn't exactly have many facial features besides the mouth and the eyes. So you're the so-called king of monsters. I don't think I've ever seen a king before, let alone a monster one. Hmm. I noticed that you dodged my question. Are you afraid to disclose your weaknesses? Am I afraid? No. I just don't see a reason to tell you. You seem like an intelligent being. Surely you can figure it out yourself when you eventually get to fight me. The dragon laughs at you. Hmm. Is fire breathing your only power? Well, I guess it would be, are fire breathing and flight your only powers? Seems pretty weak, excuse me, for some unkillable dragon. No, fire breathing, no, fire breathing and flight are just what you humans focus on when you fight us. Of course, maybe you're just not fighting us properly. If you want, I can give you some tips when you eventually fight me. The dragon laughs again. Hmm. Hold on. How did the great lich... How did the great lich lord slay dragon? I've never heard of this great lich lord or whatever. But it sounds like you're not from around here, are you? No, I'm actually from a different time period. I came here to slay the Endbringer. So I'm not from a different time period. I've been around here and there. 
I've learned a lot. Dragon history is new to me. What did the great Lich Lord do to slay dragons? Hmm. The dragon pauses and stares at you. I don't think you're actually trying to kill me. You just like learning about these sort of things, huh? The dragon laughs. Eh? I made a bet that I would kill you. However, the stakes of the bet are really low. Like, I'm fine with losing the bet, but I also do want to fight you. I want to learn about you first, though. Often, I slay monsters and never get to hear their story. I want to hear your story before I silence you for good. You're a crazy one. The dragon laughs again. Damn. If you keep laughing instead of answering my questions. Then I'll just have to skip to the fight. Are you in a talking mood? Or are you ready to throw down? I'm in a talking mood, I guess. The dragon stops smiling and stares at you. I think the great Lich Lord got lucky. Can't believe I just said that. He pauses and looks you dead in the eye. But he did. Interesting. Yeah, he just actually straight up, like, answered my question. Like, it's interesting. Like, once I was like, okay, are you ready to just fight now? He was like, uh, well, actually, no, I'll, I'll shut the fuck up. Let me. <laughs> what was your last question? The Great Lich Lord? Let me... <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, so he's willing to talk. Um, what are your weaknesses? It's actually very fascinating that he's like the great Lich Lord just got lucky. He he doesn't it's not even that like he had like a particular skill. It's just like he he somehow got us. Not many. We don't have many natural predators or enemies. If we aren't killed by the likes of you, then we die of old age. The dragon stops and thinks for a moment. Dies of old age. You are talking to the end ender dragon at the base of a mountain. You are equipped with some of your best gear. Your goal is to slay the end ender dragon after learning more about it. Well, nah, your goal is to slay the end ender dragon. That's good enough for the story summary. Old age. So if someone could magically accelerate your aging, they could kill you with a single spell. Hmm. 
Now, who would do that? <laughs> the dragon laughs. I met a guy once named the adventurer. He had an hourglass that let him manipulate time. It sounds like he could easily kill any dragon. Well, if he's anything like his dad, then I could easily kill him. The dragon stops smiling and stares you dead in the eye. But I won't. The dragon laughs. The adventurer's father. Who was the adventurer's father? Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, so it's been a minute since I brought up the adventure. He's like the living embodiment of the story itself, and he can manipulate reality with his time-manipulating hourglass. Who cares? It's the adventurer himself that I'm concerned about. Suddenly, you hear footsteps coming from deeper in the cave. What was that? The dragon raises his head and sniffs the air. It smells like chlorine and ammonia. Hmm. End to Ender Dragon. You seem to have a tough guy persona. Most of the time. But now you seem genuinely scared. Are you afraid of being the last? Yeah, I guess. Are you afraid of dragons going extinct? No, that won't happen. We're... Suddenly, a person runs out from the cave. He's wearing a white lab coat and a gas mask. Several more people follow him out wearing similar outfits. They all stop when they see you. Who are all you people? <clears> this <throat> was supposed to be my standoff against, like, this big, giant... Unkillable dragon. One of them steps forward. He's a bit shorter than the rest. This is my friend Aiden. He keeps calling while I'm in the middle of a shoot. I'll have to call him back later. One of them steps forward. He's a bit shorter than the rest. And he doesn't have a gas mask on. Uh, how's the AI doing? AI is doing pretty good. I'd almost say great. AI is doing great. I've, I've been having a fun time. Um... Why are you all here? And who are you people? I feel like that's kind of out of order, but whatever. I, I want to know both questions. I mean, technically I don't. I could just tell them to leave. You know, I, I can do that too. Um, we are the Elvish Order of the Linum Solaris, and we're here to prevent the extinction of dragons. Now, if you'll excuse us, the person steps to the side and waves to his people to move forward. You dragon stands in front of them, growling. You dragon? I think it means, like, the end ender dragon. Excuse me. End to Ender Dragon. Are these guys friends of yours? Hmm. They say they're here to prevent the extinction of dragons. Yeah, they're cool. Are you sure? Yeah, these guys saved me when I was a baby. They nurse me back to health. The end, the end ender dragon looks at you anxiously. Hmm. 
Did these guys come out of that cave? Because there's something trying to kill you, you know, other than me, of course. Yeah, suddenly there's a scream coming out of the cave. One of the members of the Elvish Order has been dragged into the cave by a large black tentacle. This is bad, the End Ender Dragon says, looking fearful. Hmm. This is actually insanely interesting. Um... If I shoot a fireball into that cave, yet yeah, is only the monster that's after the end ender dragon inside of that cave? If so, I could fire a massive magic attack into the cave. If not, I wouldn't want to hurt the Elvish Order or whatever. It's a really big monster. There are other tunnels in the cave too, so it could come out of one of those. Well, we can worry about that later. I'll just fire into all of the tunnels. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use fire magic to summon multiple massive fire dragon constructs to fly into every tunnel and attack the black tentacle creature. I didn't use any punctuation except at the very end. A dozen fire dragons pour out of your hands and fly down the tunnels. You watch as the fire from your hands lights up the tunnel, illuminating the space. Multiple screams come from inside the tunnels. Then you feel a sudden shock on your back. Mm. Let's see. I'm going to look around and take a defensive position. Meanwhile, the large black tentacle slithers around your waist. It begins to squeeze you. You feel as if all the air is being forced out of your body. You begin to feel weaker. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, so the black tentacle thing is pretty much on me. I would still say the AI is doing great. Okay. I'm going to use the Telmarine Helm to summon... Oh, wait, yeah. I'm going to use the Telmarine Helm to transform into a spiky version of myself. I guess a spiky metal version of myself. If the tentacles are trying to squeeze me, they're going to get stabbed by the spikes. Your body grows spikes and a hard exoskeleton. The black tentacle squeezes, but you can't break. Oh, the black tentacle squeezes, but can't break your new metal body. You feel much safer. Then you feel the spikes begin to dig into your own flesh. The spiky metal armor falls off of your body. The spiky metal armor falls off your body. Interesting. Um, I'm trying to refresh the story summary. Because now it's like, you, the End Ender Dragon, and the Elvish Order are facing off against a mysterious black tentacle monster. 
And I'll use puncture, or maybe I shouldn't use puncture because I'll run out of space. At the base of a mountain. Maybe I can use punctuation. Mysterious, black, identical monster. Um, so the way that I'll make this make sense is that um the Telmarine Helm transforms you back. into your normal form. Let's see. And then instead of you feel the spikes begin to dig into your own flesh, because that doesn't really make any sense, it's like then you feel the transformation begin to fade away due to the stress of the monster's attack. That way you get like the same effect kind of thing where it's like you lose the benefit, but it understands that it's like, it's not an armor, it's like literally like your body has transformed, but now you're losing the transformation. Okay. So now I need to do something that'll like save me. I'm going to use elemental nature change, which is the same thing as elemental type shifting, um, in order to electrocute, well, I guess in an attempt to electrocute the black tentacle monster. I wonder if this black tentacle monster is the Lich Lord. You use magic to summon enchanted silver arrows, which you fire at the tentacles. The arrows sink into the black tentacles, but they quickly begin to regenerate. Meanwhile, you feel one of the tentacles begin to slither around your waist. You feel as if the air is being forced out of your body. I'm going to refresh because it just didn't do what I tried to do. You summon lightning to your hand and shout, Dead God in the name of the earth, I command you to unleash your fury. The lightning from the skies above in the shape of a spear. Wait. The lightning from the skies above in the shape of a spear and flies into your hand. You throw it at the black tentacle monster. Let me do some alters real quick. So instead of uh, saying like dead God or whatever. The end ender dragon is my prey tonight. Because uh, that makes more sense. I'm going to do the triple exclamation point. And then um, instead of saying the lightning from the skies, I'm going to say lightning from the skies above takes the shape of a spear and flies into your hand. You throw it at the black tentacle monster. Yeah, see, that, that reads better. And then I'm going to ask... Um, is this black tentacle monster the Lich Lord? What's the full name of the Lich Lord? I don't remember. I don't remember his name. The Great Lich Lord. Because uh, it'd be crazy if it's like, and now we're finding the Great Lich Lord or whatever, the one that was mentioned like a few lines ago. No, it's much worse, says Emperor Martin as he watches the lightning spear fly into the black tentacle monster. Who's Emperor Martin? Who the fuck is Refresh. Refresh. I don't know who Emperor Martin is. Stop. I'm afraid so, says Tell. Who's Tell? Who's Tell? I don't know. <laughs> Just name somebody who's here. You try to think of how this makes any sense. This thing doesn't even have a face. It has no brain. Then suddenly, you see the black tentacle monster turn into the great lich lord. You watch as he laughs at your efforts. Hmm. 
What should I try and do to defeat the Great Lich Lord? End Ender Dragon. Let's combine our flames into one massive strike to take out the Great Lich Lord once and for all. So this is going to be pretty interesting. You both let your flames loose at the same time. The flames make contact with the Great Lich Lord. The entire world around you burns away, and you find yourself back in the cave that Zaina lives in. You suddenly remember that this is all just a simulation. That would be such a throwback. That would be insane, because, like, Zayna did used to live in a cave in, like, the very early episodes. So it would be, like, retcon, <laughs> or, like, episode five, technically, now. Nope, but that that's an interesting twist. The end Ender Dragon flies over and begins to breathe fire into your own flame. Then you both unleash a column of flame straight at the Black Tentacle Monster. It collapses under the intense flames. See? That wasn't too difficult. You said that guy reddened your entire race? Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Great Lich Lord, more like Great Bitch Lord. You know what I mean? The end Ender Dragon says, yeah, he did. Thanks for your help. Uh, just doing my part to keep you from extinction. Uh, it seems like those should be like two different quotes. Then the end Ender Dragon flies back to the east as you walk into your cave. Uh, let's refresh that whole thing. Boom, boom, boom. The end Ender Dragon suddenly flies away without saying anything. You think you prove that he isn't invincible, though. You just wish a certain someone had been there, been here to see it. You decide to look for your friends. Um, I think the AI is doing pretty good. You think you proved that he isn't invincible, though. Okay. So now I'm going to drink a strength potion. Chase after the end ender dragon. Leap into the sky and attempt to uppercut the end ender dragon using your god killer gloves. Yeah. If the end ender dragon is trying to fly away from me, uh, then they got another thing coming. You leap into the air and bring your fist down at the dragon. He dodges this way and that, but then suddenly he begins to lose focus. He is exhausted from the battle. You begin to realize you are stronger than you've ever been before. You leap into the air and bring your fist down at the dragon. That's not an uppercut. I want to uppercut. I, I want to go up, up into the dragon. Retry. You leap high into the air to attempt to uppercut the dragon. The end ender dragon who is flying low to the ground catches you in his jaws and rips your entire upper body off. Okay. Uh, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to use... Uh, Hydrokinetic healing salve. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Uh, to regenerate the lower half of your body. You guys may be thinking, how's that going to work? Uh, but I was disintegrated like a few episodes ago, and the hydrokinetic healing salve brought me back from that, so I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. You and the end ender dragon are facing off in an epic battle.
near a mountain. <laughs> we were at the base of a mountain before, but then he flew away. So I'm like, hmm. As you regenerate your body, the end ender dragon attempts to ram you into the ground. You manage to dodge out of the way in time. He is pissed now and attempting to grab you with his mouth. You decide to fly up into the sky and concentrate on icy energy. Okay. Um, I'm going to spawn a massive ice spear using my ice ring, which I got last episode and haven't used yet, and hurl it at the end ender dragon skull in an attempt to blow its brains out. Or I guess to cave its skull in. Let's go. <laughs> it's battle time. Do, 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 do. The massive spear of ice slams into the end ender dragon skull, shattering it and freezing him. You then fly around him in a circle and shatter the ice off his body, causing it to fall to the ground below. Hmm. Are you dead? Speak. I will finish you off quickly. If you happen to still have breath left. Oh, I, I did not say have. If you happen to still breath left. I think I could have said if you happen to still breathe. That would have been fine. The dragon's body falls into a nearby lake in the area. He is definitely dead. You have won. Your quest to defeat the end ender dragon is over. You have proven that you are forced to be reckoned with. And your name will surely go down in history for it. This fight was interesting. <laughs> so it's like, he flew away, I drank the strength potion, I chased after him and tried to uppercut him. He was flying low to the ground. So when I try to uppercut him, he like catches me in his jaws and he rips my upper body off. I use hydrokinetic healing salve to regenerate the lower half of my body. The ender dragon tries to ram me into the ground while I'm regenerating, but I dodged out of the way. He tries to grab me with his mouth I fly up into the sky, I create an ice spear with my ice ring, I jam a massive ice spear into a skull which caves his skull in and causes him to then careen into a nearby lake where he just dies, he eats shit. Okay, um, cool. I'm going to um, collect a scale from the end ender dragon. You walk over to the dragon and slice off one of its scales. The scale is warm, hard, and a light gray color. You quickly attach it to your armor. You make your way out of the forest to show the kingdom that a new hero has risen. Instead of out of the forest, it should be like out of the mountains or whatever. Okay. Announce to all the kingdom that you have slain the end ender dragon. Excuse me. Mm. He didn't seem unkillable at all. You make your way back down the mountain. 
where you when you, whoa, where you are met by hundreds of soldiers. They congratulate you on a job well done and knight you on the spot. You are also given large tracts of land and a mansion. However, this does not interest you. You have bigger plans. Uh, I guess I'm going to have uh, two mansions. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I go to Marco the Magician. And show him the scale of the End Ender Dragon. I have a whole bunch of land in a mansion. I didn't know I would get a mansion anyways if I just killed the end ender dragon. You enter his home, sit down in his office, and show him the scale. The end ender dragon. Killed him myself, you say with pride. Marco gives you an unimpressed look. We had a deal. If I kill the end ender dragon, you have to give me all your slaves and your mansion. The end ender dragon is dead. I also killed the great lich lord. Get your stuff and leave. We're out here stunning for no reason. You already, <laughs> you already know, dude. It's over. You what? Marco the Magician exclaims with a lot of surprise. Yeah, I killed him. Now I have to keep your word, you insist. No, I don't. Ooh, is he trying to die? I'm sorry. You are talking to Marco the Magician inside of his mansion. You are trying to claim his mansion and his slaves as your own, as you have won them in a bet. So he said, no, I don't. I just killed the legendary End Ender Dragon. I am the king of monsters, the king of werewolves, the king of the dead. You dare make an agreement with me and try to back out of it? Get out of my mansion now. Or what, Marco the Magician laughs. You don't want to find out, you say, looking very angry. Please, do you think I'm scared of a little boy like you? I'm going to get rid of the boy I'm twice your age thing. Marco the Magician, what powers do you possess? My boy's cocky. Like, this is, like, champion's ring level of confidence on Marco the Magician. Cojone is the size of the End Ender Dragon himself. And even he ran away. I'm an accomplished wizard, Marco the Magician says with a lot of self-pride. You take a deep breath and try to summon up all the courage you have within you. I don't need to summon up shit. <laughs> Yo... Use your ice ring and attempt to freeze Marco the Magician's head. 
in a heavy block of ice. Larger than his body. You use your ring to cast a blast of cold air, freezing Marco's head in a block of ice. Tell me, has anyone ever told you that you look like an ice sculpture, you ask? Ah, pretty good, Marco the Magician laughs. He's strong. <laughs> I'm like, if you froze someone's head in a heavy block of ice that's larger than their body, and they don't go head first straight into the ground, that implies that he's like, oh, I'm, I can just stand. No, nah, I'm cool. Yeah, what? The funny hat. Funny. <laughs> okay. Um. Do, 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 do. <laughs> when you when you thought that was gonna be like a finishing move, and he's like, no, 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 no. This fight just started. If we're fighting. Okay. Use your ice ring to command the block of ice around Marco the Magician's head to explode. Boom. The block of ice explodes, destroying the top half of Marco's head. Blood and brain stain the walls behind him. All right, all right, I'll leave. You hear a voice say. You turn around and see a tall humanoid figure made completely of shadows. Huh. Are you the real Marco the Magician? That would explain... Why that guy over there was so cocky. <laughs> you know, like if he's not real, he can like talk shit all he wants. I like the idea of the real one being like, you know what, I'm a go now. He's like, I, I, I'm not trying to get my head blown up. <laughs> you know, I learned my lesson from that one. Mm -mm, yeah, I'm, I'm about to dip out. <laughs> you already know. Ooh, is the game stuck? Stuck like a duck. Don't know why people say that. Yeah, that was me, the Shadow Man admits. Uh, I had to make sure uh, the people I work with weren't setting me up. Okay. Hmm. So I'm going to alter it and have him say, yeah, that's me. The shadow man emits. Do you have any more magic jars before you go? If so, leave them here. This better work, the Shadow Man says, as he leaves you a large box full of magic jars. You take the box and carry it to Zena's room. Okay, fair enough. You're in Zena's room, carrying a large box of magic jars. Hey, okay. Um, I defeated, uh... The great lich lord 
the end ender dragon and a clone or i guess a and a duplicate of marco the magician uh i now have two mansions uh a ton of land and a bunch of magic jars excuse me and i still haven't killed king minus <laughs> <laughs> Which is the thing that I wanted to do today. <laughs> Got sidetracked on this magic jar stuff. How long is this episode so far? Almost two hours. You have two mansions, a ton of land, and a bunch of magic jars. <laughs> what? Don't say that. Why would I say that? Or maybe that's what Zayna would say. I don't know. But refresh that. Uh, I expected more from the AI. Well, that's impressive. Let's fill some of those jars with some water from my body and plant a few of these seeds in the ground outside. Then we can sit back and watch nature take its course, Zayna says with a smile. Zayna, why would we do that? <laughs> why would we do that? Uh, these, these aren't normal jars. Uh... They can grant wishes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to store these in my room. You never know when you might need a ton of wishes. Uh, also, Zayna, uh, I love you. And I am going to come back after I store these jars. Uh, I want to spend time with you uh, and sleep with you tonight. Oh, I love you too, Zayna says, as the pair of you embrace. The next few days is a bit of a blur. You spend it with Zayna, making sure to never leave her sight. Okay. Okay, cool. So, um, that sounds nice, actually. <laughs> I was thinking about the idea of, like, and then after you do all that, it's like you just hang out with Zayna for a bit. Because if there are two things I love doing, it's hunting monsters and hanging out with Zayna. So next time, uh, King Minos, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I thought I was going to kill him this time, but I guess we didn't because we did a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button, favorite, comment, subscribe, and ding, 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 ring the notification bell to be notified whenever we do these videos. If you guys would like to watch the series so far, feel, blah, feel free to click on the series playlist link in the description box below and on the end card, I guess, or on the end card. You can click both if you want. Uh, so if you want to read the story in full on the AI Dungeon website, feel free to click the link in the description box below. And if you would like to talk about the series together or with your boy, feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section below. I do try and read the comments. Um, but if you want to get a hold of me directly, click on that Discord link in the description box below and DM me in the Discord. I love seeing your memes. Uh, one of the fans recently created themes for Jet Starlight and for Xena. So if you want to check out like some fan-made music and memes, check out the Discord. Anyways, thank you again. Peace. Chicka-da-gawa.